Whoa. Everyone is uploading a ban list discussion. Okay, no, no, random brain, Simo. Looks like I have to follow up, right? Uh, I'm so motivated to do that. Well, anyhow, hello everyone, it's Akatrius here, and I welcome you to this new video. Today we want to talk about the new ban list, and I could also go over the new master rule updates, but I'm not because I wanted to do that in a more in-depth link discussion video when in when links are possibly out on either Dueling Books or Percy or Dev Pro for that matter. Whoever has it first, I will use it to go into it in depth. All right, nice. So let's look at this. This is a balance update for 30, uh, 31, 31st of March 2017. So the first thing we see is that Major Spectre Unicorn Kirin is now banned, which is generally a good thing, but looking at the rest of the ban list, it's not as nice because of certain things that happened. However, generally Kirin ban was expected for I think two ban lists now. It took them, uh, I guess, a year to ban him, so yeah, now he is banned. Yay. Next up we've got the Tyrant Neptune and the Tyrant Neptune is a card which I am really furious about being banned because he is only banned because a certain level 1 fusion uh, called Lyrical Lucinia Independent Nightingale exists who doesn't even do jack shit for its own archetype because it's not even played there. Lyrical Lucinia is mainly played as a rank 4 engine like what Tomakachi does all the time like rank 1 things and all that. So. They didn't even play Independent Nightingale, so they could have just dropped her as soon as she is released. That would have made way more sense than banning Tyrant Neptune. They did the same thing in the OCG as well, which is just ununderstandable because, come on. Who plays Independent Nightingale and Lyrical Asinia, right? Whatever, the last banned card is Vanity's Emptiness. We have waited so long for this card to happen, uh, to be banned, because it's so unhealthy for the game. And now that it's finally banned, we can finally start playing more and not be restricted by just instant death, vanity's emptiness whenever the opponent uh, ends his turn with three negators. So this is nice. This is something I really enjoy. Now up for the limited we have the Irada Brigade, Brigade for some degree, but first we have Maxi Limited. Yep. We have Max C Limited. I don't know why, because Max C is so important for many matchups, and now being banned, it just means that uh, that a deck doesn't have really much to offer if it's going second, because another hand trap is gutted, and one of the most important hand traps to uh, pressure the opponent as well. So this is a very bad hit in my opinion. Next up, we've got. In fact, the Errata Brigade with Rescue Rabbit, which now negates the monsters it summoned. Bryonek, I forgot it, I think it was hard once per turn now. Brain Control, where you can't use its effect or something? No, it, it, it can just target monsters that, that can be normal summoned. Future Fusion, which sends the monsters to the graveyard after the first standby phase, after the activation. And Imperial, Imperial Order where you have to pay 700 life points in each player's stamp by phase, I guess, and only negates face-up spell cards on the field. I'm not even sure. So, yeah, I think it was only face-up spell cards on the field. I, I can look it up right now. Give me a second. Order. How many order cards are there? Imperial order. You must pay 700 life points to negate. Yeah, negate all spell effects on the field. I think it was negate all spell effects before. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even care. So that's now a thing that happened. And yeah. I think that Imperial Order will just sus uh, will like be the substitute of Vanity's Antinus in many decks because it's so strong. And yeah. What a Ragaki? Nah. You, you want a slumber? Nah. So yeah, that. That's a new thing. I don't know if I like this limitation of Imperial Order, but time will tell whether it will be good or, or bad. Cannot determine that right now. 
Now we go for the seven limited and we have Wisdom Eye Magician. Mostly, I think to sell the Zard Magician for their two, two week meta, which is sad. Like, like this is the same thing as for DDD, where it comes out and gets completely gutted two weeks after. I don't think it was two weeks, but I just call it two week meta too. All right. Next up, we've got Zodiac Red Pier, something that was re really obvious because Zodiacs are one of the main decks right now. Basically, tier zero, if, if not Paleozoic, would always gut them in the ass. But problem is that Raging Tempest is still selling sets, so they can't just hit them like they did in the OCG, when, where they hit Zodiac Barrage and Dr Dryden to zero and Zodiac Red Pier to one. However, I want to note that my thoughts on the OCG uh, limitations of Zodiacs are that they got it too hard. Red Pier to 2 and Barrage to 1 is all I want for the TCG after the next panelist because they cannot obvi they obviously cannot do it for this one. However, what they did in the OCG was just beyond everything, in my opinion. Next up we've got Interrupted Kaiju Slumber at semi limited. I l really, really hate this card and everything that is related to Kaiju, so I'm really happy to see this card on the balance. That's all. Uh, next up we've got, or last up, we've got Senga with, re uh, with Irada, of course, that cards with that name, but it searches, cannot be used in the same turn. So, it basically cannot search a tour guide from the Underworld if you're summoned by that, I think, because it's already used. But, yeah. This is basically all. So all in all, this battle list is everything but really good. Because it only got Pendulum decks, which are gutted in a few months anyway. It destroys many of these engines, which is one of the two few good hits. And just... It kills Maxi, which puts so much pressure on the, on the Paleozoics as well. There's a lot of pressure on the Paleozoics going from Maxi. Then we have like the all of the errata cards, which I don't even care about except for Imperial Order, which might be too strong. Next, uh, the Wisdom Eye Magician will change nothing because, well, we don't have a Kirin anymore, and all everyone has to rely on Apex Avian now. Then we have Zodiac Rapier, which is the second good hit. Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, which is arguably the third good hit, and Sanga, which nobody even, I think, cares about so much. However, we'll see because it was from 0 to 3 instantly because, well, Irada, right? So, time will actually tell, but what I am missing on this battle list is Dimensional Barrier. One of the strongest decks in the current meta game is just not hit at all. So, what I am right now thinking is that we'll get a Paleozoic only meta for a time. Because I, f I don't think that Wind Witch Island Artifact has so much to offer against that, except for the Crystal Wing. Well, time will really tell whether uh, that will be a thing. But Paleozoics will reign supreme now. They have won the last two YCS, if I'm not mistaken. And they just got zero hits. They even got support in, in the form of Imperial Order. So, I don't really think this is a good list because it just hits Zodiac a tiny, teeny tiny bit. They're still completely playable. They can still plus heavily. They just cannot plus as heavily as before, which I think is good. Because I don't want to kill Zodiacs, even though they're one of the most hated decks, but I don't want to kill Zodiacs because it requires some skill to play against them, so it is a little fun to play against them. However, what we did with the Spellers was making sure that Paleozoics are great again, so they sell a lot of Battle, uh, I think, Duelist Saga in order to sell a lot of Imperial Orders. That's all I see on the Spellers, basically. So this makes me a bit sad. However, I think I'm talking for too much time now, we're already at a 9 minute mark, and I don't want to waste all of your time. So this is all I've got to say for this video. We'll see each other next time when I possibly do a Crystron deck profile, so please, please look out for that one. I'm really happy to ha to help you guys or Crystrons and anything that is Crystron related, so if you have any questions relating to that deck or general questions relating to what I play, please ask in the comment section. I will gladly answer everything. Alright? Nice. See you guys on the next video. This has been Arcturus and stay Ravened.